What's up, guys? I'm Chris Spaggs here, back with another Four Corners video for today's three-game NBA slate, courtesy of Osmo.com. That is only three games, so I need your support today more than ever. So like this video right now and give me a comment guessing how much the Lakers are going to lose by today. They're currently a 13-point underdog at home to the Warriors. They've been really bad recently. The Warriors also just crushed the Nuggets. So give me your guess as to what the Lakers are going to lose by today. And if you're correct, I'll give you a special shout-out in the video tomorrow. The first corner I want to hit on is a game with the Bucks visiting the Sixers. This one is a 230.5-point combined total, which is a slate high. But it represents a two-point drop for Philly and a .7 drop for Milwaukee. Joel Embiid is expected back after resting the last three games. And the last time he played Milwaukee a few weeks ago, he had 78.75 fantasy points. Bucks also gave him 13 three-point attempts. They basically let him do whatever they want as part of their defensive strategy. Try to take the other guys away. Let Embiid do what he wants. And unfortunately, it didn't work for the Bucks with the Sixers picking up that win there. So I'm a little bit less confident in Joel Embiid here than I would be otherwise. I think the Bucks may need to change their approach. I think the fact, too, that before this rest period, Embiid only saw 28 minutes in that game versus Brooklyn where he did go nuts, but his minutes were a little bit limited there. There was just a chance he doesn't see enough run here. So I like Embiid. I like him at his current ownership at about 15%. And I think going above that feels like a little bit of a risk given the fact that this game just could go sideways in a variety of ways. Ben Simmons is in play, but he really hasn't been great versus Milwaukee this year. He had just 31.25 fantasy points in 35 minutes last time. The game before that, he did better overall fantasy-wise, but he still shot just 6 for 15. So they've been handling Ben Simmons pretty well. I think he's still fine here, but not a guy who I'm going to get to a lot with his price still reflecting where it was with Joel Embiid out for the last few games. Jimmy Butler projects to be the highest owned sixer at 32% right now, and that looks about right to me. Maybe a little bit high given the fact that his usage has been down the last few games. Still a good spot for him, still a better spot than for Ben Simmons, but uh, Butler does worry me a little bit. The price is fair though, so matching the field or coming close to it is probably the right move just in case he does have a nice day today. Tobias Harris is under 10% usage last time that he played Milwaukee, with Joel Embiid seemingly taking usage directly away from him. If that levels out a bit, it could be a decent spot for Harris, who's also reasonably priced. I'd prefer Harris to JJ Redick. I think Redick is a fine play, a little bit cheaper, but Harris to me has a little bit more upside. So I don't mind Harris. I don't mind Redick either, but neither guy is one who I'm really dying to get to. And I would prefer Harris if I had to choose. Giannis Antetokounmpo had 91 fantasy points and a 41% use rate the last time that he played Philly a few weeks ago. The 25% ownership on him seems fair, given the fact that it's another similarly good spot. There's a risk again. The game is just not as important to these teams right now with them both pretty much locked into their playoff spots. But if it is a game that gets intense, you're going to see a lot of usage for Giannis again, and I'm okay matching the field on him in the hopes that he does have that nice day. Chris Middleton and Eric Bledsoe both underperformed the last time they played Philly, but they're viable to me as pivots to Giannis. I think they're both not fantastic guys today at their prices, but I would prefer Middleton to Bledsoe. Both guys in play, though, really mostly as Giannis pivots. Uh, not much more interest in them besides that. Brooke Lopez is okay looking as a semi-value on a slate where it might be hard to find guys who can hit that 5x to 6x for you. So in that respect, I don't mind Brooke Lopez. I don't know that I see a ton of upside for him here. I expect more usage to go to Giannis. I think they could see some more usage to Middleton and Bledsoe as well. So Lopez, not a guy I would want to get to, but if he works from a price perspective, I'm fine having him in some lineups. The next corner I want to hit on his game with the Cavs visiting the Kings. This one is a 228.5 point combined total, which represents a 4.8 point boost for Sacramento and a 5.2 point boost for Cleveland. Harrison Barnes is currently the highest projected player on the slate, and that could come down a bit as value opens up throughout the day. But I really wouldn't trust Harrison Barnes. He's been under 25 fantasy points in seven out of his last eight games. He always projects pretty well for me, and I've seen it firsthand that he just doesn't get there very often. He's not a key part of this offense. He's not adding a lot peripherally as well. So you want to have some Barnes exposure, fine, but I would come in way under the field if he is going to be one of the higher owned players on the slate. De'Aaron Fox and Buddy Heald, though, are both in good spots. De'Aaron Fox should have some assist upside here with the Cavs defense just so bad. Buddy Heald should also benefit from the Cavs allowing 37.5% from deep. Both these guys look good here. Obviously, you need the Cavs to keep it close, but I think there's a good chance it happens. So both Fox and Heald look strong to me today. Marvin Bagley's had at least 18 shots in his last two games. That kind of usage versus Cleveland could pay dividends big time. I like Bagley here quite a bit. His price is reasonable, allows some tournament upside. So Bagley's another strong play on this Kings side. The other Kings seem iffy to me. Nemanja Bialica, Willie Cauley-Stein is unlikely to have that tournament upside for you. Bogdan Bogdanovich can have it, but the role really isn't there for him on a game-to-game -game basis. So I'm okay avoiding these guys for the most part tonight. Maybe a little bit of exposure to Willie Cauley-Stein because he's still a center. He's still getting minutes, but Bagley does take enough away from him. Bogdan Bogdanovich, I think, does have enough upside to be worth it, but still really not dying for him either. Larry Nance and Tristan Thompson both look good today with Kevin Love out. Tristan Thompson's minutes haven't quite been there, especially in games in which Larry Nance is active. Thompson tending to not see that fourth quarter run, which he needs to get there. Still an okay value and still has the upside here with the Kings being really bad against rebounders, but also Larry Nance, a stronger play to me. I think he has the upside here. A little bit of production gets taken taken away by being in the same rotations with Thompson, but I think it's still a good spot with the pace here. I also don't hate playing both guys together, even though it doesn't make a ton of sense. I think there is enough pace here for them to both get there. 
so I don't mind both Nance and Thompson both together and separately. Jordan Clarkson should pick up some scoring load without Kevin Love out there. He's a guy who doesn't have a crazy high ceiling, but from a value perspective, which we just need on the slate because there isn't a lot of guys who can even hit value in a comfortable way, Jordan Clarkson does fit that criteria pretty well. I prefer him to Colin Sexton. Sexton can get there with his points dependent nature, but really it's a spot where Clarkson does a little bit more across the board, where Sexton is just the points guy, and it's not a great one at that either, so I prefer Clarkson. Brandon Knight, too, also in play while we're talking about these guard guys. He's a value play, not much more than that, but he's seeing mid-20s minutes, and that could be valuable versus the Kings. Chetty Osman also seems like he's in play with a possible bounce back spot today. He shot just one for 12 on a 9.5 fantasy point day versus Phoenix last time. The opportunity has been there for him. The minutes have been there for him. It's a good pace up spot, and his price is reasonable, so Chetty Osman, okay, but not my favorite play on the Cavs side. In the last corner, I want to hit on his game with the Warriors visiting the Lakers. This one is a 228 point combined total, which represents a 2.8 point boost for Golden State, and a 4.5 point decrease for the Lakers. DeMarcus Cousins currently projects for 54% ownership. That seems like a bit of a point chase of his 59.75 fantasy point day versus Denver. Still a good spot, but that's a lot of ownership for a game that could be a blowout. Could also see usage flow to one of the other guys before that blowout kicks in. So Cousins is fine to me, but I think I'd go a little bit under the field there, because I just think there's too many ways this game could go sideways for him. Clay Thompson had 56.75 fantasy points the last time that he was in Staples Center. It has become a bit of a narrative developing for him about how he loves to have big games in LA because of his dad. It's really the only good game he's ever had at Staples Center, but in his previous years, he's been down for the most part while playing in LA. I don't mind Clay Thompson here because of his price and the opportunity. In fact, he's just cheap enough to get there, but I think the ownership for him is currently supporting this narrative theory of his, and I really don't see it for him being there quite that big today. Steph Curry's an interesting lower owned pivot to Cousins and Thompson. His usage has been down the last two games because of a blowout and because of Denver just trapped him and really made it hard on him the last game. Curry, though, versus the Lakers, really not going to have much defensive note across from him. So Curry can get going. He could be the guy who initiates the blowout. I like Curry quite a bit at under 25% ownership. Kevin Durant doesn't have enough usage to me to justify over these other guys. I think Durant's really only interesting as an ownership play. He's under 20% ownership, which would make him the lowest of the Warriors. Even Draymond Green, to me, looks like a better value play, even though he doesn't have much of a ceiling. He at least is probably going to get you 5, 6x, which, again, not a lot of guys on the slate are able to do that. So I would take Draymond over Durant. Durant just not there for me. I think we could talk about him again come playoff time. Rajon Rondo needs a good day here in order to keep the Lakers competitive, even into the third quarter, really. So I think Rondo's a strong play if you are playing more than one Warrior. Besides that, though, I think there is a little bit of risk just that he doesn't get there. That he doesn't see the minutes down the stretch because this game could blow away. It's a 13-point spread that could grow throughout the day even. So it is a lot of risk here for both Rondo and the Lakers in general. JaVale McGee hasn't played over 20 minutes versus Golden State this year. And defensively, he might not be the best matchup with the switching and all of that. So I think there is a bit of a risk with McGee, but I think he's at a good price and it does seem like he just has to get the minutes because there aren't enough bodies in the Lakers rotation right now to justify going elsewhere. So McGee is an okay play to me who could have some upside if things break the right way and the Lakers keep this close. Alex Cruz said to me is playable mostly if Kyle Kuzma sits. Cruz has had at least 29 minutes in the two games since Kuzma's been out recently. He had 30 and 44.75 fantasy points in those. I think Kuzma's a little interesting if he is in the game here. He's been pretty bad this year, but he's going to have to score in this game if he is going to be in the lineup. So I don't mind Kuzma if he's in, but if Kuzma's out, I think Crusoe actually is a pretty decent value play. And overall, the Lakers just need somebody to step up. It's got to be one of KCP, Lance Stevenson, or Mo Wagner most likely. He puts him in a little more scoring to help keep this one competitive with the Warriors. The Warriors are just a team who can score on the Lakers pretty much every possession if they really dedicate themselves to it. So I think there is some value in going to these guys in the hopes that they keep it close. I think also a guy like Reggie Bullock, who did get enough minutes last game, shot 10 times, which He's a points dependent guy, so you probably need a little bit more than that. But one of these guys having a good day paired up with Warriors could be a good approach to have if somehow this game does stay close. So there we go. Those are my thoughts on today's slate. And I do have some more in the link in the description down below. My column to switch and hedge on Osmo.com. So check it out. It's only three games, so but there are some more details which I couldn't get to in this video, which are in that column. So check it out in the description down below. And as I mentioned in the beginning, like this video right now and leave a comment down below guessing how much the Lakers lose by today. The spread right now is 13 points. Hey, if you even think the Lakers win and you want to make a crazy guests like that. And you can do that in the comments right now, but give that guess along with the like down below. And of course, the person who is the closest to what the actual outcome is will get a special shout out in tomorrow's video. Last but not least, check that promo code switch and hedge. It'll give you half off your first month at Osmo.com. All the ownership projections and rankings, those will be there for you throughout the NBA playoffs. So you can still get in there now. You can also get an all sport package, get MLB access, PGA, NASCAR, UFC, all the stuff you want, all available at your fingertips with this promo code switch and hedge for half off your first month. I'll be back again tomorrow with another four corners video, so good luck.